Welcome to Zen HVAC. Your source for fast, easy to understand troubleshooting information. What you need to know, when you need to know it, in 10 minutes or less, guaranteed. If you work on chillers, you've seen electronic flow proving switches. To most techs, how they work is a mystery. This video is going to explain how they work, and how to troubleshoot them when they don't work. Let's get started. Unlike old paddle style flow proving switches, the electronic flow switch doesn't have any moving parts. The switch is a solid block of metal. The switch is inserted into the chilled water pipe, just like the old paddle style switch, but instead of a paddle, the electronic flow switch has a heater and two temperature sensors, one sensor in the tip, and a second sensing the switch body temperature. When the switch is first energized, the tip is warmed up by the heater. The temperature sensor in the tip is used to verify the heater is warm by comparing it to the switch body temperature. The initial warm-up takes between 15 and 30 seconds. When water flows over the tip, the heat is carried away, cooling the tip. The drop in tip temperature is how the switch detects flow. If the tip temperature doesn't drop, the switch won't close its flow-proofing contacts. Before we move on to troubleshooting, let's take a quick look inside a typical electronic flow switch. On the left is the tip, where the heater and one of the sensors is. On the right is the wiring connector. You can also see a tiny circuit board in the body. The switch is sealed and except for cleaning the tip and wire connections, it's not serviceable. Now let's look at troubleshooting an electronic flow switch. The first step is verifying there is proper water flow. Flow switches are programmed for the machine they're installed on. If the water flow is too low, the switch won't close. If the chilled water flow is correct, check the wiring connections, especially the connection of the flow switch. If the connection is not sealed properly, water from condensation or rain will cause corrosion. Next, verify the control voltage is correct. Most electronic flow switches are 24 volts, but check to be sure. If the flow switch still doesn't confirm flow, check the water for glycol. A high glycol concentration changes the water's specific gravity and can prevent the fluid from cooling the switch tip. The next step is removing the flow switch and checking if the tip is dirty, and if it is, cleaning it. Slime, scale or corrosion will prevent the water from cooling the tip. While the switch is removed, we're going to perform the swirl test. To perform the swirl test, with the flow switch connected and energized, swirl the tip in a cup of water. The switch should prove flow. If it doesn't prove flow, the switch could be faulty. This video gives a general overview of the operation and troubleshooting of electronic flow switches. Keep in mind, there are various manufacturers and styles of electronic flow switches, and they may vary from what's described here. Key points to remember. 1. High concentrations of glycol can affect the flow switch. Some flow switches can be calibrated for glycol. Contact the manufacturer for recommendations and options. 2. Dirt and scale on the flow switch tip can cause it not to sense flow. Clean the tip as needed. 3. Compromised electrical connections and low control voltage can cause flow switch problems. You are now an electronic flow switch troubleshooting master. Let us know what you thought of the video, and let us know what topic you'd like to see next. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.